Now, for our next story, we go back a decade when Russia and Ukraine were fighting over Donbass, a territory in Ukraine's east but controlled by Russian separatist forces. On the 17th of July 2014, a major tragedy hit the world. A Malaysia Airlines Flight 17, a passenger flight from Amsterdam to Kuala Lumpur, crashed, killing all 298 on board. 193 of them were Dutch, 43 were from Malaysia, 27 from Australia, and the rest from the UK, Germany, Indonesia and other countries. Now, soon after the crash, Ukrainian and American officials said the plane was hit by a surface-to-air missile fired from a mobile Soviet-designed Buck missile system by Russian-backed separatists in Donbass. Two years of probe by a Dutch-led joint investigation team backed these claims. It found that the buck was transported from Russia to the rebel-held region on the day of the crash. The incident is the deadliest airline shootdown incident to date. The Netherlands and Australia held Russia responsible for the deployment of the buck. In 2018, they began legal remedies. But Russia has denied involvement in the shooting down of the plane. Moscow's account of how the aircraft was shot down has also varied over time. Flight MH17 was downed by a Russian surface-to-air missile fired from a Russian-backed separatist-controlled territory. The joint investigation team traced the missile to a Russian army unit in Kursk. In absentia, three military commanders were sentenced to life in prison for mass murder while the fourth defendant was acquitted. Russia's denial and refusal to accept responsibility remains a painful issue for the victims' families. Now, I spoke to the family of one of the victims of the MH17 tragedy. Listen in. It's 10 years today. Um, What can I say? You never prepare for it. You can't prepare for it. You know, every life's different. Um, You know, changes. I could go through a multitude of changes. Um, You know, both for my family, for Cameron's family. I mean, now that they immigrated to New Zealand. you know, that's, it's, it, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that have, that have fallen apart. Um, you know, and for other reasons, we've, we've become part of, a, of another family, mm. and that is the MH17 family, Absolutely. the victims. Yeah. Um, it's not a, it's not a and, and no disrespect to anybody, it's not a family that I don't think any of us want to be part of. Yeah. Have there been any developments in the pursuit for justice in the MH17 for the MH17 victims over the years? There has. I mean, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of work behind the scenes. Um, and I'd also like to say thank you too, which I do. Um, I, think, I think you've got to. Uh, you can't let this just slide. Um, and, you know, we do. We all get involved. As much as it is political, um, there's no doubt about it. Um, but, you know, you, you've, got to, you've got to seek justice. Uh, because for justice, justice for one is justice for all. Yeah. In terms, we don't want this to happen again. Mm-hmm. And it has happened in the past. But if we're doing this and the people, the, the, the legal battle that's going on in terms of what's happening now with, with Ukraine and Russia, um, it, suffering needs to stop. We just, we just need to find, we need to find justice. There was a ceremony taking place at the National Memorial of Fishhazen near Schiphol Airport. King Willem Alexander, Prime Minister Dick Schoof, and representatives from several countries gathered to honor the victims. The names of all 298 victims, including 196 Dutch citizens, were read aloud, followed by a two minute silence. Australian Foreign Minister Penny Wong reaffirms commitment to accountability. Australia, the Netherlands, and other nations continue pursuing justice through international channels. Despite Moscow's obstruction, the case persists and the pursuit of truth remains unwavering. As we remember MH17 and honor the lives lost and stand united in seeking justice, the pain endures, but so does the determination to hold those responsible to account. Remembering MH17, a tragedy etched in history, I'm Alison LaGrange for First Post.
across continents, one powerful news source. Bringing you diverse perspectives on the issues that matter. We go beyond the boundaries to give you that little extra about every sporting moment. So thank you for making First Post 5 million strong. We're counting on your support and you can trust us to bring you the news unfiltered and unvarnished. Climate change is on our doorstep. It's time for a revolution to take root. And it starts with 1.4 billion Indians. It starts with one tree. One tree for humanity. One tree for Mother Earth. One tree for our future. Project One Tree a News 18 network initiative.